Welcome to Lifeblood. This is George G. And the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, strong and powerful Thompson Wynn. Thompson, are you ready to do this? Uh, I am. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me today, George. Excited to have you on. Thompson is the founder and CEO of Nearside. They're a financial services provider and neo banking platform built on the belief that starting businesses should be easier. Thompson, tell us a little bit about your personal life, some more about your work, and why you do what you do. Uh, sure thing. So uh, a little bit about me. So, you know, I, uh, I grew up born, and raised in San Diego. Um, and, uh, you know, I uh, studied mathematics in, in undergrad. And, uh, you know, what, what I like about my personal story is that it's hugely tied into how Nearside got started. So, you know, even though I was born in San Diego, California, uh, my parents were born in Vietnam. And so, you know, they, they, they basically fled the country after the Vietnam War. My, my dad uh, ended up in Belmar, New Jersey, and my mom, my older sister actually waited in Vietnam for like, I think it was like seven years to get mm -hmm. their visas. And so, uh, yeah, right, so in that seven years, like dad learned English, picked up a whole bunch of odd jobs. He was like a babysitter, he was a farmer. He was a bouncer for the E Street Band uh, before the boss came on. Awesome. And, yeah, <laughs> had a whole bunch of odd jobs, had a small business on the side. And, uh, you know, when my older sister and my mom's visas came up, my dad sold all this stuff, moved over to L.A. to receive them and uh, basically tried to just make it work. You know, they, they started businesses, they had jobs, they basically tried to uh, uh, just kind of make it in a country that they had no network and, and uh, no, no support system. And so uh, grew up in San Diego for all intents and purposes in the suburb. Um, after grad school, um, went to, into tech. And so I was a data scientist at uh, a mobile security company uh, called Lookout, and then started my, uh, my own machine learning startup called Frame Data, uh, which predicted uh, user churn for small businesses um, and other startups. Uh, you know, raised some money, uh, had uh, really good customers working with us. Uh, sold the company to, to Square, uh, I guess Block is what we're calling it, Block, uh, in uh, 2015. And so the whole team was incorporated into Square Capital, and I ran the machine learning and data science for the Square Capital team. Um, and so that kind of sets the stage for, for uh, what I do today here, here at Nearside. So I think, you know, what I like about uh, Block's mission is that, you know, by making it easier to process credit cards for small businesses, you're economically empowering them to, to start a business. And you know, with Nearside, the, the idea is that core banking, small dollar credit, and even just starting your business is still a really, really hard problem to tackle. If you want your first bank account as a small business, you probably have to pony up $20, $30 a month. It's probably like $20 for an overdraft fee. Um, if you want a small business loan, unless you had super prime personal credit yourself, it's near impossible to find that as a, as a new as a new business. And then even just getting to the starting line, incorporating your business, um, you know, it could be a, a very opaque process, depending on the city and state that you're applying uh, from. And so Nearside uh, makes it easier for people to just do all of that at once. We provide a checking account. We provide small dollar loans from $200 to $10,000. And we help you incorporate your LLC or your corporation in 30 minutes. Incredible. Nice. Um, I, I think it's, it's, it's amazing how resilient human beings are just talking about your folks. Your yeah. dad comes over here. Did, did he know that? Could, could he speak English? No. <laughs> right. So it's just like, like he learns, you know, and, and like my parents, my older sister learned once they got here. Um, it's so crazy. You know, it's like they, they, they came here uh, in search of like a, a better life. And, you know, the, the whole, uh, uh, the whole shtick with them is that, you know, they, they wanted to work and sacrifice as much as they could, uh, not even so that they could enjoy, you know, sort of like the fruits of their labor within their own lifetimes, um, but so that their children, um, you know, who hadn't even been born yet, me and my, my younger brother and I, uh, their children could have uh, sort of like the, the shot that they didn't. Um, and, and that, I, I think that, that to me has driven pretty much every professional decision I've ever made in my life in terms of what I decide to spend time on, what, what problems I want to solve all the way down to, you know, what, what are the uh, biggest problems in this country that, 
you know, we want to tackle at Nearside, if only because it's this realization that, I mean, look, you know, like uh, I've won every lottery in the world to, to be in this seat, to, to be sitting here, you know, um, talking to you and sharing everything about um, Nearside and our company. Uh, to do that is a gift in of itself. And so what we do at that time, um, I found to be uh, probably the, the biggest question I ask myself on a daily basis. Yeah, well, I respect and appreciate that just 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 immensely. Like from my perspective, perspective is one of the most important things in life because if you think that this place sucks, then you, it's probably going to suck for you. If you think <laughs> it's the greatest place in the world, then it's probably going to be the greatest place in the world for you. So I think that's and, awesome. And, you know, it's definitely required today. Like stuff is, you know, it's, it's a June, 2022, a lot of stuff is happening. A lot of stuff has happened in the last six months. And so it, there's, there's a lot of reasons uh, to so almost like take on this like fatalistic, pessimistic approach to life, but that we're still here that we, you know, get to wake up every day means that we get to continue to, to, to fight and to, to build something better. That's right. Still standing. Still swinging, Thompson. Yeah. All right. So you start, you, you, you are a data scientist, you become an entrepreneur, you, you sell. So you have a successful exit to a, a huge, one of the biggest companies probably in the world. So the experience there, it's got to be incredible. Your experience starting a financial services and a bank, essentially, how was that? I, you know, it's, uh, it's not easy. You know, it's still not easy, honestly, right? So, you know, like as a as a fintech company, you know, like uh, so much of how we're able to provide these services to our customers are the partners that we choose. You know, so like our partner banks and our vendors that help us onboard and uh, uh, you know onboard and analyze um, uh, you know our our uh, applications efficiently allows us to, to be able to provide these like core services, core financial services online. Um, and so, you know, the, the way I always like to think about it is that in, in FinTech, basically you're, you're trying to build all these pipes and you know, like you're trying to build pipes from your company to the partner bank, to your ID verifier, to your KYC tool or your KYB tool. And the better you get at building those pipes, the better you're able to build better products for, for customers. Um, cause at the end of the day, like small businesses don't really care whether you have like best in class real-time fraud assessment or, you know, like the smoothest, uh, uh, KYC process in the world. What they care about is that they're able to get their account in 20 minutes that they can get a virtual card number immediately after being approved. Um, and that they can get pre-approved for a loan in as little as two or three months. And so that, that speed of access to product and capital is the, the sum total of all of this, I'd say like fancy FinTech engineering underneath. Yeah, I think that that's, a, I think that that's really well described. So how, how long has Nearside been, been in operation? How has the progress been? Is it, is it what you expected? Uh, it, it definitely has been what I expected. You know, like, I, like we started in 2019, and so from 2019 to today, there's been a global pandemic mm. and then now the makings of a global recession. So I, I think uh, it, it's been a, a very, I'd say, interesting couple of years for Nearside. So Nearside is three and a half years old. Um, we're, we're 70 people. And I think it, it's been, you know, it has been what we expected. Like, obviously, we'd rather COVID didn't happen and we'd rather this recession didn't happen. But one of the things that we have seen from it is, is you know, to, to your point earlier about resilience, just the sheer resilience of small businesses. You know, like we, we go back to like my parents and it's like, well, they didn't have any other choice but to like grit through it. And, and I think that's the same situation for the, you know, the tens of thousands of businesses who work with us and, and choose us on a daily basis that, you know, like this is their plan A. And so, you know, just as, they're pushing through and gritting through everything that's been thrown at them in the last two years, you know, like shutting down your uh, in-person restaurants and becoming a delivery business or, uh, you know, like just uh, slowing down on the number of items you sell, uh, both in person and online. 
dealing with all that is, is just been like a, a daily staple for our customers and, you know, by extension, uh, ourselves here at Nearside. So I'd say, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a, a, a interesting is the word I'd use. You know, it's like startups are always challenging. Like we, we all know what we signed up for. Um, but I think the, uh, you know, through the adversity comes perseverance, progress, and honestly grit. You know, we'll, we'll come out of the other side of this, I think, uh, with a, with a renewed respect and appreciation for our customers, uh, more so than we already have. Yeah, I love it. So in the three and a half years, have you solved solved the problem of the unbanked or is there still more work to do? I don't think so. You know, like <laughs> I think uh, w- one thing I learned uh, when I was at Square slash Block um, was something Jack said uh, in all hands where he said, you know, um, missions never finish, you know? And so I, I don't think we'll ever finish uh, you know, like democratizing financial services, just for the same reason, we're, we're not going to finish socioeconomic mobility. It's not like we're going to have like a big mission accomplished banner and say like, we did it. Like we, we solved socioeconomic mobility and, and poverty in this country, uh, certainly not as our own startup. You know, like we, the way I see ourselves is that we are part of a ecosystem of private companies and public infrastructure and public government that works together to basically build a oh, more perfect union, <laughs> you know? Like, I, it's like, uh, there's a, this musical, Hamilton. I like how I'm asking, is it like, oh, have you heard of this musical called Hamilton? But uh, there's a line in there where, uh, you know, Hamilton says, it's like planting seeds in a garden that you don't get to see. And, and that, that really resonates with me because the sum total of all of our work that we do in standing up a uh, checking account, better loans, and a faster incorporation service for our small businesses um, sets the stage for financial services and better products that we may not get to see while we're at Nearside or maybe in our lifetimes. And, and it's, it's such like a lofty thing to say where it's like if you, if you start from the premise that this company is going to endure past your own professional effort, then you actually get a lot more thoughtfulness and long-term planning about, you know, like, what do, you, what do you want this company to be remembered for? What, what do you want to be remembered for professionally? And that's, that's helped us guide so many of our decisions here uh, at the company. I think that that's such a, it's such a cool thing to hear somebody with, with your background and the, I'm sure, countless brilliant people you've had the opportunity to work with and learn from and your own personal experiences. Uh, because I, going back to this perspective thing, some of my favorite stories are the JFK story during the space race when he went up and asked the janitor why he was working so hard. And the guy said, well, I'm working to put a man on the moon. So why not approach your business the way that you've just described it? Do you think that anybody can do that? I, yeah, because really the difference is thoughtfulness, right? Like I think, you know, um, we, we all spend time working, you know, some of us are retired, um, but f- you know, if, if, if I'm gonna spend at least eight hours a day with people working on some problem, who are the people that I personally wanna work with? Um, which then extends to who are the people we wanna work with as a company? And, and what are the problems that I wanna solve or help solve? And thus the problems that we wanna help solve as a company. And that introspection and reflection yields perspective, which then yields values and a mission for the company. And, and I think so much of that has to be in place before you raise your first dollar, before you hire anyone, before you convince anyone else to you know, sort of jump off this professional cliff with you. You know, like <laughs> before you rope other people into this mess, you should definitely just sit down and ask yourself, like, what, what are we doing? What, why are we here? Um, because it, it's, it's such a material part for me, it's such a material part of my day and it is, uh, you know, part of a, a, a patchwork of professional careers working uh, in tech. And man, it, you know, this is one of the few industries where if you have an audacious idea and you have the means to write code and build products to then deploy it on the internet, you, know, you, you could raise money, like large amounts of money to then go and realize that. Um, that that's not a construct that exists in most businesses or, or even just countries. 
um, not, not to the stage in which the U.S. has deployed venture capital and seen entrepreneurship, startup entrepreneurship in, in the last 20 years. Um, and so that, that we all get to participate in that is, uh, to me, a gift. And, and so that, that gift demands responsibility and introspection. What a time to be alive, truly. Right, yeah. No, I, 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 I just couldn't agree more. So I think that's incredible. So what do you spend your time doing these days, Thompson? What does being CEO of Nearside look like? Boy, you know, I, <laughs> it, it changes on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, like I'll tell you, three years ago is like a combination of uh, writing code, uh, responding to emails, and talking to customers. T today, I, I definitely don't write any code. Um, otherwise, I think our engineering team will get very, very angry at me. Uh, I still do talk to our customers. So I'll talk to folks who have a checking account with us or folks who have a loan out with us or people who are working to incorporate just to understand what they're concerned about, whether we're meeting the mark for them. And, you know, like if we're not, how can we, how can we be better? So talking to customers, um, checking in with our team. I, I think at this stage, um, I'm no longer working on the, the product or the thing. I'm working on the team and the culture to sort of like foster work on the thing. And so as a, as a result, I've, I've almost turned into this like player coach archetype where it's like, you know, uh, I still do write a little bit of code or I still write a couple of docs and you know, I'll still get into the weeds of product and uh, engineering from time to time. But um, so much of my work these days is checking with teams uh, making tiebreaker decisions, you know, like I have a, ex I'm extremely lucky. We're all extremely lucky to have like the, the executive staff that we have here at Nearside and they've been able to run pretty autonomously. They've been able to uh, collaborate and coordinate extremely well. Um, but I find that my role still is necessary to set direction, be a tiebreaker vote, be a, you know, sort of like a, like an ear to, to lend an ear whenever necessary. And that's not just to my e-staff, like that's still everyone at the company. You know, at 70 people, uh, I still maintain this like open virtual door policy where if someone were to throw time in my calendar or Slack me, um, I'll just immediately get on a call with them. And the thing I tell them is that, um, you know, it's a, it's a gift that we get to do this. Like eventually when we're 200, 300 people, this might be a little bit harder, but that we're this small still, uh, means that we get to do things that that don't scale just for a little bit longer. Love it. Perfect. Well, Thompson, you've given us a lot, but the people are ready for that difference making tip. What do you have for them? I, you know, I, I used to think that in order to like make a make a capital D difference, like a big difference, I, I had to like, you know, be successful in business and make a ton of money and then go and deploy it as like a philanthropist, like growing up in undergrad or growing up in high school, I'd hear like, you know, like rich person comma philanthropist. And I was just like, what, what is that job title? Like, like, can I apply to, to be one? <laughs> <laughs> and what, what, what I realized once I started working in Silicon Valley and in tech is that um, you really don't need to wait. You know, you don't, you don't have to wait until you've made like a ton of money or until you're half retired or until you're just completely retired to, to make a difference and to do something positive, you know. Um, lending half an hour a week as a volunteer somewhere or deploying capital and donating to nonprofits and causes that you really care about is at least something. It's a good start. And what I realized is that, you know, making a difference like we want to believe making a difference is like the, the, big, the big rally, planting a flag, talking to millions of people and, and enacting change in one instant. And I think what I realized is that making a difference is like, well, just like showing up to these like micro transactions and micro changes in lifestyle or, you know, things that you want to change about your life or the world in which you live in. So if you wanted to make a difference by you know, uh, reversing the, the current uh, uh, climate change trend that we're seeing here on earth. Um, you, you don't have to, you know, try and get elected to like public office and then make a big sweeping executive order to, to ban, you know, something that's destroying the earth. You, you, you could just lend whatever time or money you have today and 
if you're listening to this podcast and you have a high-speed internet connection and you have a roof over your head, you have time and you have money. Um, and, and, you know, that's, uh, it's one of those realizations where um, things could always be worse. You know, like my, my worst case scenario living here in the States is, I don't know, like uh, moving back in with my parents. My, my parents' worst case scenario was death. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> so like I, realizing that has made me, uh, one, grateful for the situation that I'm in. And, and two, sort of like thoughtful about how I want to make this difference on a daily basis. Well, I think that is great stuff. It definitely gets, come on. Thompson, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people learn more about you and how can people engage with Nearside? Yeah, if people still want to know more about me, they're more than happy to reach out. I'm, I'm Thompson, T-H-O-M-S-O-N at nearside.com. If you have a small business, and you want a checking account, or you're thinking of starting a business and you want to incorporate your LLC, uh, you can just email me or you can just go to nearside.com and just sign up. It'll take you 10 minutes and someone from our team will be more than happy to help you out. Love it. Well, if you enjoyed as much as I did, show Thompson your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas, go to nearside.com and if starting a business has been on your mind or if you've got a business and you need credit financing, whatever it might be, go check it out, nearside.com. Thanks again, Thompson. Thanks so much for having me, George. And until next time, keep fighting the good fight. We are all in this together.